and it works with a dog too. Sibling Blues is a 2016 family drama written and directed by John McLaughlin. It's the story of three siblings who arrive at the after service for their deceased mother only to find that the family that she left them for is also in attendance. Uh, it stars Johnny Hurst, who you may remember from Our Eddie, the review, um, which he wrote, directed and acted in. This time he's, he's solely acting. But there is some, there's a continuity between the two films here, sort of aesthetic continuity that I really like. I like this sort of idea that there are sort of a group of like-minded people in Liverpool who are, who are creating that sort, of, sort of similar content and similar style. They are, they're separate from whatever's currently trending in the general filmmaking community. They're, they've got their own thing going on, which is really interesting and unique. So this film, like our Eddie, it has this, and um, it has these sort of tracking shots, these Alan Clark type tracking shots where we sort of follow people around, and it, it has that like like in the Alan Clark films, it's very natural, it's very documentary style, and it kind of it there's there's an air of danger to it when you're following them. It feels very natural, but you constantly think whenever you're, they're sort of walking down the street and you're behind them that there's something, there's either some danger waiting around the corner or they are the danger, like they are the one who knocks, <laughs> and they're they're trooping their way to trouble. I really love that aesthetic. It has a bit of the Ken Loach thing as well in the pub scene. That there's um, you get you get a sort of views of other people in the pub that, the the in a, in a in a normal film would maybe not add something to it, but in a film like this that's very realistic, just seeing someone else just sat there having a pint just give it just makes the world a bit bigger and a bit more relatable and real. I really I love that documentary style. And Ken Ken Loach doesn't do that as much anymore. This is more like the sort of poor cow era Ken Loach where it's unclear whether the people in the background are even supposed to be in the film or if they've just gone for a pint he doesn't really do that anymore he does the sort of standard um, revert, shot reverse shot thing but these these people are still sort of getting that gritty realism through and the, the performances in it are really strong they're, they're very powerful performances there's a lot of emotion flying around and I love the um as, as well as the sort of Alan Clark movement thing, once we actually get in somewhere, we, it's it, there's sort of very tight spaces with a lot of sort of anger and conflict going on, and we get, we're getting very close with them with this sort of smooth, ha smooth but handheld style that's sort of floating around them, and you're getting real close, and you can see see and feel what they're doing, but it's also it's quite unpredictable. It's because it's that sort of intimate drama. It isn't sort of just someone comes in and punches someone. It's people arguing, and that the sort of the weight the weight of the drama sort of switches between people, and it's a sort of, the, the the sort of intense situation where sort of any wrong word could completely change the direction of the scene. So it's really you you don't know where the scene's going to go, and it's it's gritty in that sort in that real sort of way that I think I think has been lost a lot recently because film filmmakers tend to tend to make sort of gritty dark films where they. They have to go to very dark places, like there'll be drugs or sexual abuse or or torture, sex trafficking stuff like that. That's you know, I mean, those things do happen and they are real. But but this this is much more real and personal and, and dramatic in that it's the the characters, it's it's their feelings and their conflicts that can change and switch at any moment. Like like this Cassavetti sort of thing where anything can change. Anyone says something or someone might change their mind and the scene might change and we might go somewhere completely different. You understand what I mean, Gus? Look, it's done. It was done wrong, but it's done, so be it. Well, I'm not going home. So we'll... I'm going to get very drunk. I also love that there's no music in the scene. There's, there's a silence there that whenever someone says something and then they mull it over for a few seconds, you just, you're just left waiting. There's no music there to tell you this is the dramatic bit, this is the sad bit, you should side with this bit, you, you, you just, it's just like you're there in the room and you, you're trying to read it, you're trying to read it in their small, their subtle movements, their facial expressions. It's just really in that real gritty way that's not trying too hard, it's just this is how things happen, this is how this is how family dynamics are. There's, there's no bells, there's no whistles, there's no big bows on the top at the end, it's just cold, hard, real. Can I come in? No. So Sibling Blues, great cinematography, I love the coldness of it as well as the movement. Great acting, this intense performance is when we get up close and they're really spitting and throwing these emotions around and stuff. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to see more because it's it it sort of ends it ends on a bit of a cliffhanger as if like this could be the first episode of an ongoing series. And I'd love to see some more of that if that's going to happen. I don't know if it is. Hopefully. Uh, anyway, sibling blues as always. The link will be below. Check it out. Please like, subscribe, share, tell all your friends. Um, we're the Dotel Show and we do a new video every Monday. So we'll see you then.